You know, I've gotten on a kick lately of uh, doing a few. Uh, this is my second gruesome song in a row. This is, of course, Lord Franklin from uh, Pentangle's album, Cruel Sister. Recently did a lesson on Cruel Sister. So um, uh, anyhow, in that one, we talk a little bit about the story of the murderous sister. This one is the doomed Lord Franklin. And uh, John tells John Renborn, of course, this was one of his pieces that he played uh, for the rest of his life. And um, it tells the story of Lord Franklin. So I'll save, I'll save that. Uh, you can catch, catch the video of him talking about the um, why Franklin became a lord after his whole crew perished looking for the Northwest Passage. And anyway, but it's a fascinating uh, guitar tune that, that John put together. And, um, and it, it kind of drones on in this modal feel of we don't exactly know what key this is, what mode this is in. We hear notes out of a major scale. But we don't really hear the third of the chord very often, except it does happen in, in the melody. So we've got this, this, he would frequently play this E chord as, as a five chord and not have a third in there, not have a G sharp in there. Um, so anyway, so, and mostly um, flowing random picking. Like all I'm doing here, very slowly, you just have to master this first. I'm playing an E chord. I'm, I might play it in a Z minor because I'm not going to play the third string. And I'm just using the sixth and fifth strings in the bass and the first and second up on the top, playing them mostly with my first two fingers. And, the, and these two notes, the B and the E, are going to drone over a lot of chords. And what John does when he's playing this song is noodles around with notes on the D string out of the key, out of an E scale, going all the way up to B, occasionally C sharp, really avoids the seventh, and gets all the way up to E. So again, right there I was just kind of noodling um, in the key of E, keeping this constant pattern going where I'm hitting a thumb and then my index finger and then the thumb on a different string and my middle finger. So very slowly that's just this. I could change the bass notes, the order of the bass notes. So you might mess around with that a little bit, but but let's get back to the, 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 the chord progression and what happens here. John plays this with some really interesting chords. It's in standard tuning, but you hear chords like this. And this is essentially a B chord played out of the E family at the seventh fret but leaving the top two strings open, keeping the E and the B in there. So I've got a B on the seventh fret of the sixth string, a B on the ninth fret of the D string, a D sharp, and that's some of the clash that we hear in this chord is the D sharp on the eighth fret of the G string, and an open E, these notes are just a half step apart. That E would really make this chord an add 11 chord. The E would be considered an 11th in this case, but because what I just have is B, D sharp. I don't even have the fifth, doesn't matter. And, but we do have the 11th. So we've got a third, a root, a third, and an 11th. And then we have these other chords. Really just two fingers on the third and fourth strings sliding around through the progression. And uh, anyhow, so we'll break all that down. Um, he does something really, really unusual in the studio version that he never did when he did it live, and that is when it finishes, we do that slower. I'm coming out of an A with C sharp in the bass to an E chord, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. He leaves out a beat just for the heck of it. Every time he plays this, uh, jumps to an A chord from the E at the after the at the end, he plays only three beats in the measure. At the speed this song goes, you can barely tell that. Here's what it sounds like slowly. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four. One more time. One, two, three, four. Do again a little faster. And I hit that A in the bass really loud so you could hear how it, if you were trying to tap along with me at the speed of the quarter notes there, you could hear that um, it came early. Just had a measure of three, four time thrown into the rapid four that all the rest of it is in. Um, there are some other modifications, there's some other things that that he changed over the years that he played this. This recording is from about 1970, the Cruel Sister album, but uh, again, John played it um, 
up until his death at 19 in 2015, so almost 10 years ago now. Um, okay, I think that is it. I will start breaking down Lord Franklin in the next couple of segments. I want to elaborate a little bit on the, uh, the noodling kind of idea of playing, pl just improvising a little bit of a melody in the key of E. Now, and we can change the different modes of the key of E depending on what we play with the scale. So if most of this is going to be played on the fourth string. And then, like I mentioned in the, in the uh, intro, two fingers, my index finger on the B string, my middle finger on the E string, I'm not really going to play the third string later on in the song. We're going to use it as a bass note. We're going hit to it, hit it with our thumb once in a while to um, finish up some chords. But and So I'm just starting here playing an E and alternating those high notes. I could occasionally bring in the low E and that will give me the the, the droning effect of always having an E in the bass, and if I start messing around with my E scale, E major would go E at the 2nd fret, F sharp, 4th fret, G sharp at the 6th fret, A, and I chose to hammer it on there. And you can hear the A, the A gives us a, a sus4 sound some tension there that needs to resolve by coming back to the G sharp. Well, we have really interesting um, uh, embellished chords, chords that have some unusual additions to them. Our E chords, we're going to play the E's, most of the time we're going to play the E up here using the fifth string as the bass note, and that's where John gets the hammer on that, he, that happens a couple of times in, in the first measure each time, up at the 6th and 7th frets of the 5th string. So I was talking just a minute ago about what we're doing in the intro, but a lot of times the way we get into this is the last bass note, however long I'm going to noodle here, I'm going to make the 4th bass note of, of the last measure a B and move it up to the 7th fret while I hit the low E in the bass. That's like the little the bass pattern that we're going to see for what I'm calling E5 in in the tab. But notice again in the tab, I don't I'm not putting in where you play these fingers. You just keep them in between bass notes. Um, but to get back to the rest of the chord, so we're going to play the E5 in the first two measures just with this E up here, and and definitely hammering on probably even twice sometimes from D sharp to E. Then we're going to go to an A sus2, just two notes at the second fret like an A chord but leaving the second string open. Now something that John does here that is pretty important to a little embellishment that you hear in the song is he plays this not with the two fingers I've got here. He plays it with his third and fourth fingers. And that's because, and then he picks away on, on all of these strings. And you can even use the third string in this case because, but the last bass note, this F sharp, is going to slide. We're going to F sharp minor in a second, and the F sharp minor is going to be a standard F sharp minor, but played without a note on the fifth string because we're not going to hit that string anyway. So I really just need a full bar at the second, and my third finger comes up to the F sharp on the D string. And so when we hear that by by using these fingers for the A chord, that's where we hear this slide from E to F sharp as he heads into the B chord that's coming up. So this is how he plays the F sharp minor, just one finger on the fourth string. And then that finger stays on this string, comes up to the B chord that would be at the seventh fret. And I just add the B in the bass on the sixth string and the D sharp on the third string at the ninth fret, uh, eighth fret, sorry. And then this, D, this B chord, again, I'm not gonna be using the fifth string, but I'm gonna hear those three notes along with the open B and the open E. We do hear all three strings up here a little bit randomly.